We are driving a 2020 GMC Acadia. Coming up, I'm gonna tell you how buying an Acadia is like paying for hotel Wi-Fi. But first, information explosion. The GMC Acadia is a three-row family SUV, a very logical place to start. Interior! What are your thoughts about the interior of the GMC Acadia? This is the high-end version though, right? Oh yes, this is the Denali. This is the fanciest of fancy GMCs. Well, you've taught me to look for soft materials. I'm touching those. Yeah, there are some soft materials. There are also some hard materials. In fact, the further rearward you go, the harder things get. And the low- Get out of here, you dirty iguana. <laughs> When I peek around, there are things I notice. There are little bits that say, hey, maybe we didn't care so much about the details. Certain mm. uh, panels don't quite line up. Uh, the headliner, if you go to the very back, there's a kind of a fringy area where uh, it's not covered at the edge where perhaps it should have been. It's fine, the plastic is fine, but then when you start thinking about the fact that this is 53 grand worth of Acadia, wow. you might want uh, maybe a little bit um, higher quality uh, throughout. I do like how clearly this is laid out and that there's not a lot going on. It's all just pretty easy to use. Let's talk about usability. So in the second row, the seats slide and recline, which I always love because if you get somebody especially tall in the third row, then you can inch that seat forward just a little bit. Uh, interior passenger volume is much less than you'd find in the Toyota Highlander, Honda Pilot, Ford Explorer, Kia Telluride, <laughs> Hyundai Palisade. Wow. It's kind of a tweener. It's, it's actually a little bit closer to being more like a Kia Sorento size. It kind of, uh, it's almost a compact, almost a midsize. Nonetheless, you can definitely get adults in the back row and uh, the row in front of it, so it's a pretty usable space. Accessing that third row, not so bad. The seat slides out of the way. One of the things I noticed, though, is that uh, our daughter has those weak little, uh, you know, four-year-old hands, so the mm. lever that she has to lift up to get the seat out of the way is, it takes too much effort. She can't move it. So, like, if you have little kids in the third row, you're going to have to get them out of there. They can't get themselves out. Interestingly, the Acadia is offered in five, six, and seven passenger versions. So the five passenger version is only on the off-road focused AT4. I have no idea why that's the only model to get it, but as a no cost option, you can get six passenger seating with the second row captain's chairs or seven passenger seating with a 60-40 second row bench. Cargo space is pretty darn good. There's more than 12 cubic feet of space behind the third row. There's an underfloor storage area so you can oh. hide things, probably your weed. <laughs> hey, we live in California. You don't have to hide it anymore. <laughs> what I like is that you can fold down the third row really easily. You've just got those little poles and they flop right down. And then there are second row releases in the cargo area. So you don't have to make the trek up to the side door. You just pull the little lever and they plop on down. So you can load up the Acadia very, very conveniently. There you are. Another trip to Costco, maybe the third one of the weekend. Massive pile of toilet paper. You got to get that all in there. You don't have to walk out. You don't have time to walk around <laughs> to the side. I've got to get this home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Museo house needs those toilet paper rolls. And so you can just quickly drop them from the back. Very cool. How is your seat? It's very cushy. I like yeah. it. It feels like a kind of a classic armchair. It it's, does. Yeah, that, it fits pretty well. I've got great uh, lumbar support here. I'm yes. Feeling, I'm feeling well supported. And for taller people, there's a lot of headroom. I've got a lot of headroom. I could wear a funnier hat and still be very comfortable. And the thing is, when you start with no dignity, this is not undignified. <laughs> and I still got massive oh clearance. Oh my goodness. Thank you, sweetie. There you go. Rear window test. Armrest test. So the positioning of the armrests is fine. I have no objections. I can drive in a very comfortable eight and four, elbows comfortably sitting on the armrest. However, feel mm. that. That could be more padded. You've got this yeah. piping on the side and the stitching and then outboard here. There's some cushion, but like not really on the edge. Totally. I'm gonna go uh, one arm in the middle, one arm in the middle. Could be better, could be worse. Family friendliness. When you look at the safety numbers, this is a five-star rated vehicle by the NHTSA. 
The Acadia has a neat feature that is a rear seat reminder. That's so fantastic. That was my greatest fear when we had a small child. Yeah, you're going to leave your kid. Itself. Yes. With our four-year-old getting in the second row, I've noticed that it was almost easier for her to get in the Super Duty than it is to get in this thing. Hmm. The, the step is a little bit high. She still makes it work, though. I think overall, as far as packaging is concerned, what do you think? Family friendly? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Very family friendly. Yay! With caveats. <gasps> The base level Acadia, in fact, the base two trims, you cannot get lane keeping assist and automatic emergency braking. You, oh, wow. you, you cannot get it. Those are standard features on a base Honda Civic. Those are standard features on a base Toyota Corolla on every one of its competitors that I can think of. In fact, you have to go up to the third highest trim, uh, wow. which is just below this one. And even then it's optional. So you have to add another $1,300 to get a package to add those. Wow. I don't know about that, man. That's how it is for 2020, but I won't be surprised if the market dictates to GMC that they have to make those features standard in the coming model years. I mean, honestly, if we were thinking about a vehicle, that alone would put me off of this. Hey, have you subscribed? If you haven't subscribed, be sure to. Uh, I swear it'll be, usually the videos will be lighter than this. It'll make tunnel. it easier to see the graphic. Oh, very good, yes. <laughs> Style! What do you think about the exterior styling of the GMC Acadia? It's difficult to come up with something to say about it. It's fine. That is, I think, the correct response. It is a vehicle. And we <laughs> yes. are in it. You know, to be fair, in the front, it reminds me of a truck. It's just not my style. I think that's a fair observation, though. It's like they took straight lines and then they bulged them out a little bit. They inflated them slightly to make it seem muscular. It does. And the end result is a uh, professional grade GMC three row SUV. This one is the Denali, so they've fancied up a little bit. And by fancy, I mean added chrome. I love the chrome. You they... love the chrome. That is an unexpected <laughs> twist. <laughs> I do, the, especially around the um, door handle. I think you're a lady who appreciates a little bit of flash, so that uh, that maybe shouldn't be as surprising. It's as flare, it yeah. A little light flare. Yeah. My lady likes the flare. I do. What do you think about that font? Font? That the Acadia is in? Haven't even thought about it. It just looks like it's um, like a spider super related superhero, like a Spider-Man knockoff. I was like how you said spider related superhero, like like another spider, like are you talking about Spider-Man, right? No, no. Oh, no, 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 it's the other one. Because it doesn't look like the Spider-Man font, but gotcha. it does look like it would be describing a spider. Arachnidude, arachnidude, <laughs> governor GMC. <laughs> If you want to send me uh, DMs about Arachnid Dude, or you'd like to see what I'm driving or flying between YouTube videos, follow us on Instagram. Future Evie has put my handle down here and hers as well if you're curious what the family's doing. Emotion Factor! Sitting motionless is a perfect time to talk about the emotion factor. Uh, for me, what is the emotion factor of the GMC Acadia? To be clear, you don't necessarily have to feel an emotion about your three row SUV. Uh, function might be fine, but uh, I'm not feeling it. I'm with you, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Are we way off base? Is there some emotional component we're just missing with the GMC Acadia? Tell us in the comment section. If you're emotionally moved to buy a GMC Acadia of your own, check the Kelly Blue Book listing link in the description below. In motion! Oh look, an opportunity to take a right turn. Let's see how the GMC Acadia steers when the light turns. Here we go. Ooh, okay. Uh, in my experience, the GMC Acadia is all about ride comfort and just sort of being innocuous in its operation. And it succeeds in both of those regards. Uh, one thing I've noticed is that this particular Acadia is the Denali and the Denali gets exclusive adaptive dampers. So they're constantly adjusting the damping rates with a magnetorheological fluid. There are magnets and particles in fluid adjusting that damping rate constantly. So ride quality is actually quite good. It's a comfortable driving SUV and also quite quiet. Active noise cancellation comes standard. Yeah, it's quiet, it's quiet. <laughs> Guys, can I show you something kind of cool? Watch what happens after this bump. Needless full throttle acceleration. Whee! Ooh. So a couple of things happened there. One, did we go really fast? Yeah, we did. We went really fast. There are three engines, but this is the V6, and it's eager to pull needless full throttle. Oh, yeah. 
The other weird thing, you may have heard, did you hear some tire spin there? I did. Are you wondering why an all-wheel drive GMC Acadia would spin its front tires? Now I am. Look at this down here. What's that? It says times two. Yeah. So you can control whether it's front drive or all-wheel drive with this selector. Why would you do that? I don't know. <laughs> I, I think theoretically, if you just know, I'm not going to need uh, the added traction of all-wheel drive. I'll just put it in two-wheel drive and have slightly better fuel economy. That is a thing you can do, but it's kind of weird to me, right? I have a suspicion that if you or almost any other human being was driving this and you this, this came in two-wheel drive, you would never know to put it in all-wheel drive. Oh, yeah, that would be very sad. You would be losing all that functionality. Do you remember the guy we saw in the Chevy Tahoe at Mount Hood who thought he was in four-wheel drive and had the drive selector in low? People don't know what to do with their cars. They have no idea which tires are being spun when that says two, and they might not know, even if they're in a low traction situation where they could really use all wheel drive, that the four means all wheel drive. So just know, if you have an all wheel drive Acadia and you're driving somewhere slippery, make sure that's on four. If you'd like to light up the tires and dazzle your child with all that V6 power, flip the two. All Acadia's include a nine-speed automatic transmission, and it is very smooth. It is a really nice nine-speed automatic transmission. I dig it. You know what you wouldn't dig? Imagine, if you will, you're making a lane change. You okay. look over your left shoulder. Okay. What do you see? Not much. That's correct. It's a very high rising belt line that might add some nice aesthetic touch to the outside, but inside, it's very hard to see over your shoulder. Yeah, I can't see a thing. However, blind spot warning is standard, so that partially makes up for the fact that you can't see out of the thing. <laughs> Overall, I think the GMC Acadia drives competently, if not thrillingly, but that's appropriate for the segment. I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. Remarks! At the beginning of the video, I teased that buying a GMC Acadia is kind of like hotel Wi-Fi. Here's how. So you go to the hotel, you, you've paid for a room, and then they're like, and the Wi-Fi is only gonna be $13.99 a night, and it's not even that good a Wi-Fi, and it's just like, you just feel like you're being nickel and dimed. Do you know that the only color that does not cost extra when you buy a GMC Acadia is white? What? So if you want any other what? color besides white, it's at least $500. Oh my gosh. Are you offended? I want to go to the Motel 6 down the road. Yes, well then you'll be over at the Mitsubishi dealer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys don't charge extra for colors. So like, we barely charge for the cars. <laughs> Sick burn. Sick burn. What do you think? Is that unreasonable to charge extra money for any color besides white? Well, maybe you should think of it as an opportunity to save money if you're willing to, if you don't care about what car color car you drive. That's the thing though. That basically means that like the advertised price is not the real price. Mm. They're just like creating the illusion of value. Mm. So angry about it. <laughs> I know there's real issues in this world, but this is the hill I die on. Oh, but I went through all the trouble of making that Micah tiebreak graphic. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank Bust you. out the graphics, sweetie. And another Yay. thing about that paint. <laughs> on the other hand, there are some neat features that come standard on the Acadia, things like three-zone automatic climate control Ooh. and keyless access with push-button start because you know at this point I am so in entitled that I wouldn't dare reach into my pocket to grab a key and push a button. So that's a nice touch. Mm -hmm. Seven-inch infotainment screen comes standard. There's also this eight-inch unit on the higher trims. I really like the different colors for the different features. I feel like that's very easy to read out of the corner of your eye. <laughs> Can I show one funny thing to you? You yes. see that? Push the marketplace button. Yes. Have you ever wanted to buy food from Applebee's using your car? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's correct. No is the correct <laughs> answer. Scroll through the options. Um, you got, uh, Domino's, Wingstop, Wingstop no, IHOP, IHOP eh. and those are your options. Wow. <laughs> what about um, fuel up? What does that do? You can buy fuel from these different purveyors uh, using your car. So you, when I you go there, you can just... if it's actually a time saver. So far with how speedily it loads, I don't think it would be. Yeah, you have to sign in and uh, get the whole thing set up. Part of me thinks that the credit card I've been using for decades would probably be an easier solution, but they are trying. Yes, we filmed that Marketplace bit months ago. It did not age well. As you know, it's a cuckoo crazy modern world where everybody needs their devices. Sorry, I'm just uh, trying to boom her up. So there are five USB ports strewn throughout the cabin. That's standard. There's USB-A and USB-C ports. So there's plenty of ways to charge up your phone. 
So if you compare this size-wise to a Honda Pilot, the Acadia is three inches shorter, four inches lower, three inches narrower. So if you have a small garage, then it's easier to park. And since it's a fully usable cabin, there are reasons why you would want this versus just a larger vehicle. And then if you do have a smaller garage, if you use the uh, power lift gate, which is also uh, foot activated, there's a little switch over here where you can just quickly dial in which height you want it to go to. That's so cool. I've never seen that. How common is that? Mm, I mean, it's very common in GM cars. <laughs> You'll see that exact knob in other vehicles. It's a cool feature. Yeah, that's called fishing from the parts bin. <laughs> As mentioned, we're driving the V6. There are three engines available, a base 2.5 liter engine. Here are the numbers for that. A mid-range two liter turbocharged engine. Here are those numbers. I think the sweet spot in the engine lineup is probably that turbocharged engine, but if you want to step up from that to the V6, it's only like 500 bucks. Wow. And the fuel economy is not that much worse. In fact, the V6 is as efficient as the base four cylinder on the freeway. I don't even know how that works. <laughs> right? Well, okay, I do kind of know how it works. It's uh, <laughs> using cylinder deactivation technology. So it functions mm. um, like it's got fewer cylinders when it's just cruising and it's clearly doing the job. So there's not a lot of good reason to get the base engine unless you just want the absolute lowest price. Now you probably haven't thought about this, but take a look where my finger's pointing. That is the transmission controller. Oh. Thoughts? I don't like when they do that in a way that's surprising, that I might accidentally reach for the controls. So here's the thing. They're not gonna let you, uh, well, I, I was able well. to activate neutral there, <laughs> but they're not gonna let you uh, hit park at the speed. How about reverse? Ooh, I, and and, and I would happens. say I'm like 90% sure that they wouldn't let you hit park at the speed. <laughs> Honda has sort of trained me a little bit to be more comfortable with push button transmission controls. Mm -hmm. That said, this is maybe one of my least favorite implementations of a push button control. Because as we're uh, at a stop here, I'll show you that you have to pull the drive and the reverse selectors, push the neutral, push the park. And then here's the zaniest thing. Ooh. The low <laughs> mode is over uh -huh. here in a button and then you're supposed to look down here and use your fingers to manually control the transmission. Now I'm in second what? and now I'm in third. What? Are you gonna reach down here and push the buttons up and down to go through your transmission? No, you're not. I don't care who you are and what you think, you're not gonna do that. Could Bad you... transmission controller. Bad. Sweetie, give me a rolled up newspaper, I'm gonna give it a whack. <laughs> no. On a much more positive note, there are almost more camera angles with the 360 cam than I could have possibly imagined. If you hit each one of those buttons, there's like a variant. You can look all around the vehicle and look, it makes it look like there's a little car. It's like you could almost wave from the vehicle to yourself. <laughs> I mentioned that we're driving the Denali trim, which is the fancy chromiest one. There's also an AT4 trim, which has GM's twin clutch all-wheel drive system for added off-road capabilities. And it just looks rugged. It's got all the four-wheel drive off-roady things. So uh, if you plan to go off-road or want to look like you plan to go off-road, that <laughs> would be the Acadia to choose, the AT4. The Acadia Denali starts at right about $50,000. This one is uh, over $53,000. We have to dig deep in the memory banks, but I am gonna say this is not nicer than the Kia Telluride SX trim, which is the fanciest version of mm. the Telluride. This one is $53,000. That Kia Telluride SX is right about $43,000. Wow. A $10,000 premium for this thing over that Telluride? I don't know, man. Which would you rather drive? Fanciest Telluride or fanciest Acadia? Tell us in the comments. That's crazy. I know. Then again, GM does tend to incentivize their vehicles, so maybe you can get a deal on one. Do you have any remarks that we have overlooked? If so, tell us in the comment section. Synopsis! And thinking about the essence of the GMC Acadia, it seems enticing based on uh, the price that's listed, but then when you start digging into it a little bit, it's like, oh wait, I have to pay extra for that, and like, I don't know, what am I getting? To me, the GMC Acadia is the suspiciously inexpensive Airbnb <laughs> of three-row SUVs. Is that crazy? <laughs> no, that makes a lot of sense, actually. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Before we wrap up, uh, let me remind you that if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to Mike Drives. At 100,000 subs, I'm gonna review a windowless white van. If you'd like to see what we're doing between videos, follow us on Instagram. Dink think. Lastly, we have upgraded our cameras. They're not a used gaggle of GoPros, they're now a new gaggle of GoPros. Ooh. Oh, that's nice. Look at how stable that shot is. <laughs> Did you have a nice drive in the GMC Acadia? 
had an adequate drive in the GMC Acadia. Who wants an adequate high five? <laughs> and you too, come get your adequate high five. Uh.